Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to Total Conquest. This is a Total War modification for Medieval 2 Total War and oh my god is it absolutely insane. I can't believe I have only just seen this mod now because it's just absolutely mind-blowing. The amount of detail that has gone into this mod is crazy because the campaign you're looking at right now is a world conquest. It's crazy. This is the entire world and I don't think this has been done before in total war to encompass the entire world which is absolutely crazy and you can go ahead and play all these different factions like Spain, the Ottomans, Persia, you can play as Ming, you can play as the Prussians, England, Portugal, France, uh, you've got Japan, you've got all these other factions and each of these factions have their own unique rosters, buildings, cities on a really cool custom map but do you guys want to hear the crazy thing? In Total Conquest, this is only one of the campaigns. There are six campaigns, including this one in total, stretching from 1220 and the Crusades, which focuses in on Europe, uh, the north part of Africa and India, going all the way to the Four Canets, which adds in Asia in 1326, and then finally having the complete world conquest. This has a start date of 1547, and that includes America and South America. And that's just absolutely crazy to me, like the amount of detail that's gone in to create all these different start dates. And obviously the units you get in the 1220 start date of the Crusades are going to be vastly different to the units you get in 1547 in this campaign we're looking at right now in World Conquest. So I've, I felt like I just had to make a video on this mod because it's just mind blowing the amount of detail in it. It really, really is. And it just goes to show what a great, you know, game Medieval 2 is that you can even create something like this because one of the reasons we don't have this in future Total Wars is because they just don't let people mod this much anymore. And it's one of the, the great reasons that Medieval 2 is such an amazing game. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to run through all six of the campaigns so you guys get a good idea. This first one's probably going to take us a little bit longer than the others, but once we kind of get through the World Conquest uh, map, uh, then we will go ahead and probably be able just to squeeze through the other ones very, very quickly. Also, if you guys want to see me do a campaign on this mod, let me know in the comments um, right now what one you want me to do, and obviously drop a like on this video. And if this video gets a thousand likes, then I'll be more than happy to start a campaign on whatever style date is mostly suggested so thumbs up if you see someone else commenting yours and i'll just do whatever ones at the top um, i mean there's a lot to choose from and a lot of factions to choose from so just comment down below what you would love to see um, it's just this is crazy so cool we'll just jump in enough of me rambling on Let's go ahead and just start off as Ming, um, and what I'll do is I'll toggle Fog of War so we can see the entire map, and we can go ahead and just check out all the different start positions, what stuff looks like, um, and we'll check out some of the buildings for Ming and stuff so you guys can see all the differences. So we obviously start off uh, over here with a pretty vast empire as Ming, but on the mini-map you can see, look how little this is, uh, considering how many cities we start off as, as Ming. So let's go ahead and toggle uh, Fog of War really quickly so we can see the entire world showing up. First things first though, we'll take a look. You can see all of this. All of these are unique buildings to Ming themselves. They have a whole different roster and obviously starting in the, the latest start date of this, we're going to have a lot more access to guns, cannons, rocket artillery, and it's just going to be a completely different kind of play style to say if we were to play in the 1220 start date or if we play in the Renaissance in 1331 or even like the four canates in 1320. 26. It's going to be completely different. So if we take a look at the entire map really quickly, there's a lot, like, the map itself isn't super detailed, and you can kind of see where I am on the map right here, as we are kind of zoomed in due to it being medieval too. Um, so yeah, the map is itself isn't, like, crazy detailed on, like, the edges and stuff. However, it's gone for a lot more of, obviously, including the entire world, so you only have as much space as you can kind of fit in. So because of that, stuff like Europe is a lot more clumped up. Um, um, however, you know, places like, uh, I see, you know, for example, you know, South America, you have a lot more distance between your cities. So, you know, you're going to have a lot more marching when you're in America than you are, say, in Europe, where it's kind of just, you know, heavy fighting and you're really fighting over these towns back and forth. And this kind of really reminds me of Civilization games when you play on like a world map and you have these cities relatively close together it really does remind me so you don't kind of get the huge amount of cities in the like 
in the concise areas. But you know, the city is the cities are spread out across the entire world. So you kind of got to take that as an example. You can't have the level of detail you get in, say, a medieval kingdom's expansion in the entire world you know it's going to be completely different so as you can see this is europe you know it's going to be spread out we have the holy roman oh the of these is this prussia now or i'm not sure yeah i assume this is going to be prussia by now we have the polish the french the english obviously the spanish which has loads of colonies over here uh you know it's surprising that england haven't got any of these but maybe they haven't colonized yet um, and I also really love as well, all of this territory that you see in black is conquerable as well. It's just there a moment it's rebels, so it's kind of like the natives are living there. It'd be kind of cool if there were maybe natives here to begin with, um, and you kind of had to fight them out. But, uh, you know, it's still kind of interesting nonetheless. As I said, I'm not sure if we can take a look, if we can take a look at London. Can we do that? No, we can't see any London's buildings, because I'd love to show you, you know, the differences in the buildings, but unfortunately... Doesn't look like we can see any of this. We obviously have the, the Mongols up there and stuff. Even Japan down here. We even have Australia. Doesn't look like... Oh, no, Australia does have a province as well. So you can even start your Australian emperor, empire. I know I have a lot of Australian fans. But yeah, as you can see, like, look at this. Even like these like buildings like here, right down there. It's just really, really like just detailed in on the map, you know. And just the sheer scale of it is just absolutely crazy. Yeah, and these cities as well, obviously all having their own custom battle maps and stuff. Uh, which we're not going to focus in on this video. I want to try and get through all the campaigns. So cool, I've shown off the World, uh, the World Conquest campaign map right now. What we're going to do is we're going to jump in and we're going to start from the beginning. So we're going to run through the Crusades, Renaissance and New Age. And then we're going to go through the Mongol incursion in Asia. And then the Four Canates. And then obviously that'll wrap up the video. So let's go ahead and jump into the Crusades in 1220 and we'll see what that campaign map is all about okay guys so we are now in the 1220 crusade start date and as you can see it goes ahead and shrinks the map a lot more but that's going to allow for a lot more detail to be put in on this map it rather of uh, having to spread spread everything out and kind of consolidating europe europe itself will be a lot more uh, interesting you even have up to but it's not like it's a small map you still have all the way into india and stuff so you can maybe try and recreate alexander's empire a little bit late so again let's just jump straight into the campaign we'll play as i mean there's really matter who we play those players castile uh, actually no let's play as the welsh uh because i know i do have quite a few welsh followers as well i mean it's, we're only going to toggle fog of war anyway so it's not like it's uh, important who we play as but i guess it gets to show off the type of units and as you'll be able to see the units that we're about to play as are going to be completely different to say the ones that we did fight in you're going to see quite a few of these kind of normal units um which we saw from like the normal uh, medieval 2 game but you, know, you even have all these buildings and stuff which have been changed up to have different stuff uh, it's just crazy so let's go ahead and jump in and uh, we'll toggle uh, fuck off war again I don't know why I keep doing that um, so then you can see the map itself so the map is going to be a lot more kind of cons like I guess condensed in with more land and buildings being put into this um, so you're going to have a lot more of an impactful battlefield rather than when you do have the entire world. You're going to have more cities and castles in these uh, concise places like Italy and stuff. But it's not like it's a goddamn small map whatsoever. You know, look at Castile. You have the north of Africa. You even have all of these provinces, again, which you can go and conquer from the rebels if you want to. So you can go and try and take out the entirety of Africa and go to the south of Africa and stuff. You know, there are provinces down here in Ethiopia and stuff. Uh, you could even and obviously go all the way over into uh, India as well. India has its own faction at this time, so maybe you can play as the Indian factions and march in. But, and again, obviously having the, uh, the Crusades as well, for the uh, for the Holy Land, or maybe you can fight as the as the uh, current occupants and try and push back the Crusades. So again, this campaign is uh, more concise, and I think the next two campaigns we're about to look at are going to be focused again in on this campaign map but with different errors so the next one we're going to look at is going to be the renaissance campaign pack this is obviously going to start to introduce gunpowder uh, which we will see um, and that will obviously change up the buildings and also rosters again i don't think we can see this i probably should just play it as england let's quickly just play it jump in and play as england because i mean i'm not in any rush look at that battle as well let's just jump in and play as england so we can quickly see the uh the buildings because i want to play as england in the next one and see if their buildings change dramatically um so let's just jump in and i believe at this time 1220 the 100 years war um england have a lot of their territory and stuff i mean it's a bit before the 100 years war so 
um, actually quite a bit before the Hundred Years War. Uh, but anyway, like, so if we look at the buildings, you can see that they do have a whole range of these different ones, which have all been changed. And again, the units have all been changed as well. So we'll go ahead and jump into England on the next one, and we'll take a look at all of this. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. So yeah, I will see you guys in the 1331 Renaissance campaign. Okay, guys, so we are now in the Renaissance in 3031 AD. And you can already see how many different factions are emerging. You know, these empires are growing as we go through these different start dates. You know, you're having factions gaining and losing land and these empires being completely different. You know, even if it is, and I believe it is the similar map from the, the, the last campaign we just looked at, it's still going to have completely different setups. There's going to be different factions which are going to be doing, you know, other things, have, having buildings, losing uh, cities and gaining castles and stuff. So, you know, even if you, it's kind of a similar map, it's going to have all these different um, factions which there, there weren't before. Oh my god, I can't goddamn spell. There we go. Um, so yeah, even though it is, I believe it's the same map, you're going to have all these different cities changing hands. So I believe, again, we'll have different units, and as you can see, we do have these different units. I imagine we'll start to be getting, you know, other interesting things, having granaries and buildings, and just kind of seeing the level of technology just change throughout all these campaigns will be really interesting. So, you know, obviously we can see Spain and uh, Portugal over to the left. You kind of have a few more factions emerging in Africa, um, especially over here. You can see this huge faction right here, the, the Il Canid, uh, just taking so much land. Is that... Um uh, is that, what's his face? Um, Saladin. Is that, is this his empire? I think it is, right? Or is, no, he must be a little bit before. I actually don't know. Um, but I, I remember the Il Khanid, uh, kind of sticking in my mind. You have this huge, you know, Mongol horde of a golden horde making its way across all the way from, you know, the, the tips of India over there. You know, just making their way down. You've got a more predominant Indian faction just stretching all the way over. It's just such a cool mod. It's just like so large and big and adds in so much detail and flavor. It really is just insane. So what we'll do is we'll jump into the next campaign, which is set in 1453. And that is set in a campaign setting called The New Age. And we'll be able to see the campaign map completely change from then. Okay, guys, so we are now back in the next campaign. It's crazy that this is all just the same mod and I'm just rolling through the campaigns. But we are now in the uh, New Age scenario in 1453. And again, the campaign map is the same. In this, this is the last one, the campaign map's the same. However, the entire world has completely changed. You know, you have the rise of Aragon. You have the Ottoman Empire coming into it. You have a ton of other factions like the Kazan Khanate. And uh, I think Scotland are a bit more predominant. You have Serbia kind of arising, you know, you have, uh, the hanging out of power is always there, but you have the Kalma Union, um, and you have, I believe, Nogorov as well, spawning somewhere, the Eastern Roman Emperor still lands, so you can go ahead and play as them, as the Byzantians, and try and rise up again, which would be pretty, uh, pretty cool. Um, and you, you just have like a ton of other factions. The Great Horde has lost all of its land over here. So it's really interesting uh, the way that the map just completely develops. I think, what was the one I wanted to look at? You have Genoa there. There was one, one faction I really wanted to point out. You know, Venice. Yeah, there you go. Muscovy, Aragon. We've already looked at them. Where are Nogorov? So, yes, yeah, so you see like a huge dominant power right there. You've got Hungary. Where the hell are Nogorov? Am I? Oh, there we go. So you can see, you can see the whole of Nogorov right there. Um, so again, let's jump into England because I'm kind of using that as a comparison of like how the buildings and units have changed. So we'll jump in um, and take a look at that. And then after this, we just have two more campaign packs which have uh, the addition of Asia into the, the map as well. So if we take a look at England again, we can see that the buildings are kind of similar, but I imagine uh, there are going to be further ones on in the uh, line. And then for the units, you know, straight away in the beginning of the campaign, again, you've got to remember that these units are the ones you're getting right away. So as you get further and further on along the building tree, you're going to go ahead and unlock a ton more. And they're already there. Just look at the upgrade in armor and stuff that you're seeing. Um, and again, something that was really cool about Medieval 2 is as you get armor upgrades for your units, they also change in their look. So you'll see that visually represented on the map. And again, we'll just uh, toggle, uh, toggle, fog of war. 
Hey, you got it first time. Uh, you can see like the map is just completely different once again with all these different factions holding different parts of the land. It's just really, really cool. I just dig it so much. Uh, so cool, let's jump into the last two campaigns now, uh, which have the addition of Asia in on them. Um, and we'll see what that kind of does to the campaign map. Okay, so we are now in campaign number five. Wow, that's crazy. Which goes ahead and adds in the whole of Asia and Australia uh, into the campaign map. This is set in 1230. So this is like 10 years after the Crusade setting. However, you have Asia in it as well. Um, so this is going to be set, I believe, in the Mongol incursions with Asia. So obviously, if you're going to play this date, you'd probably prefer to play um, you know, as an Asian faction, as I imagine Europe itself will be. Oh, I don't have to imagine. We can go ahead and take a look. But, uh, you know, like England will obviously not receive as much or Europe won't receive as much detail because we'll have a lot of detail over here. So we'll jump in as one of the, uh, the Chinese factions and we'll, we'll take a look at the campaign map once again. Um, and I, I know I keep on bringing it up, but it's just crazy. It's really easy to install as well. I'll link it down below in the description. Um, so let's go ahead and just uh, toggle Fog of War again, and we can see the map. So obviously you have a ton more of, uh, of Asia in this uh, now, which stretches really far over. You even have you know the addition of Japan, so you can play as some of the Japanese or go and try and conquer them if you want to. Um, actually, no, it's Japanese rebels right now, so I don't think they are a playable faction in this start date. But I imagine if you go later, you will. So as you can see, you have the uh, the whole of Asia down here as we go into India again. Um, and I believe Europe itself will be a lot more condensed. Yeah, you know, Europe itself in this map has been a lot more condensed because it's more about the Asian theatre. Um, and obviously just stretch the map this much. But you still have the whole of Europe and stuff, and again... Uh, I imagine these units will be very different to the ones we could recruit in the first campaign. A lot of these buildings, you, know, you have warehouses, uh, you know, manganel makers, public life. There's a lot of buildings here. There is a ton of buildings uh, right here. Highways. Uh, all the units are obviously completely different. Having pikemen, whereas I believe in the first campaign, the World Conquest, we had a lot more guns and cannons and stuff. Assassinate, assassins, diplomats, merchants, monks, spies. You've got your navy here, some good guard cavalry. Um, again, this is just the beginning of the campaign. You think how much this roster is going to change as you try and push back the Mongol invasion. Um, again, just so much detail. And you can go and conquer all of this, like, kind of dark area. You can go and conquer as well. So let's finally jump into the last campaign, which is set in 100 years' time, where the four canets are really, really thriving. Okay, guys, we are now in the final campaign, the four canets, in 1326. And as you can see, the campaign map itself uh, probably won't change much, but the factions themselves will. You obviously have a Shogun rising up now in Japan. Uh, I believe a lot of the you know, Asian dynasties will be, obviously the four Khanates, I should say, are going to be you know, the major powers in this area of the map. You have the Great Yarn, you have the Golden Horde, you have the Ill Khanate right here. Um, and where's the last one? This is the power of four Khanates, so I imagine there's another one somewhere. Um, right here you have this one as well you, you even have the Teutonic Order it's just mad so let's go ahead and just jump in as another this, God, this faction is massive let's just jump in though and again we can compare some of the units you know the differences a 100 years makes and this is the last one um, as well so there's only you know the, I say for sorry, there's uh, six campaigns in total and you can see it again uh, we take a look at the units the buildings are still very very vast I imagine you can get a lot like different ones here um, which have like completely revolutionized and kind of changed the way that you, you know the, the stats they give and stuff uh, unit wise again you can see some additions as the armor and its weaponry all improve again finally we will just uh, do this for the last time thank god and we can just see again like the campaign map i don't think changes but we can see the emergence of new factions in japan uh, you've got a pretty powerful faction down here the indonesian uh, faction rising up down here in the philippines and stuff um, and uh, we also have, you know, India kind of really taking a stronghold of their forces right there. We have the Ilkhanate rising up again, uh, Constantinople. We just have so many, you know, kind of factions arising forward. I really like how all the, the provinces as well are kind of uh, localized as well to what they were called in that language. So if we go over to Asia itself and go into China, you'll see a lot of these factions being kind of quite aptly named for the region. 
um, which is kind of cool. So yeah, that's going to be Total Conquest, an absolutely crazy mod. And as I said, I'll do a campaign on it if you guys want to, but you're going to have to go ahead and tell me what campaign you want me to do on and what faction you want me to play as. Um, I'll leave, just go ahead and thumb up, if you see someone saying what you want that to do, uh, go ahead and just thumb that up to the top of the video, um, and I'll just look at the most top rated comments, so just let me know and I'll do it, and if this video gets a thousand likes, so make sure to like the video if you enjoyed, and go over and download the mob, because it is just absolutely crazy, I can't stress that enough. So, if you enjoyed the video, uh, as I said, I really appreciate it if you could drop a like and a comment down below, uh, please go check out my other stuff, I do loads of rise of Mordor content which is a Lord of the Rings mod for Attila Total War um, I do loads of other really cool medieval stuff so just go check out the rest of my channel subscribe if you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one